Welcome in. This is your odds checker betting preview for this week's U.S. Open. I'm Rick Gaiman. That right there, Jeff Feinberg. And Jeff, here we go. The world of golf. A lot of storylines. We get to have a major championship. I cannot wait for this. It's going to be a pretty wild week from, you know, from Monday morning to tee off to, to the weekend. Uh, yeah, it's just going to be pretty crazy. I'm as excited. This is really bad to say, Rick. I'm really excited to see uh, almost how the early part of the week unfolds uh, as much as I am for a Sunday champion, which is embarrassing, but the drama is, is too much. And we don't get this, Jeff. The world of golf is generally not filled with drama, but now it is. So we're getting a taste of something we've kind of never really had. Yeah, we've never had free agency, never gone to like a division rival. There's never been anything crazy. For comparison's sake, Rick, a year ago, we were all losing our minds over like, will they pair Bryson and Brooks together? They hate each other. What's going to happen? Oh, my God. Compare that to this. That's <laughs> like a pebble. Like, so, yeah, we never get this. When we get a pebble, we lose our minds. So, yeah, when we get this, we're allowed to act like we are. At least I am justifying it in that respect. Perfect, perfect example uh, to contrast this to the the uh, Bryson Brooksy stuff from a year ago. Okay, well, uh, let's jump into this. I'm excited. So the top of the board, here's the odds checker grid where you can shop all the best lines available. Uh, the favorites, I'll give you four of them. We'll go with four. Scotty Scheffler, 12 to 1. Rory McIlroy, 14. Both John Rahm and Justin Thomas at 15. They are the four golfers shorter than 20, Jeff. We are seeing Rory McIlroy, Justin Thomas play well at the Canadian Open. Full disclosure, we don't know how that event ends just yet, but we can say they're playing well. Um, how do you start to break down the top of this board? I mean, when you consider that Justin just lost before he won the PGA Championship, it doesn't really matter to your point if one of them wins, if one of them finishes second, third, fourth. They're carrying a, a fantastic week into the major. U.S. Open as a whole, they've really delivered us a prototype, Rick, and it's long, and I used to say long and straight, but you kind of look at the last handful of winners. It's really just elite long players. Brooks Kepka with his pair of them, Dustin Johnson, uh, uh, geez, Bryson DeChambeau, John Rahm getting the monkey off his back last year. They're all just amazing total driving, be it sometimes not even the most accurate drivers, but they're, they're complete elite total drivers. And I'm not really going to have many bets away from the typical U.S. Open prototype winner. I'm going to put it out there like that. So of these four at the top, that that to me sounds like Rory McIlroy. It sounds like John Rahm. Justin Thomas a little bit. He's not as long as the other guys. He can get a little bit more wild. Are Rory and Rahm the prototypical U.S. Open winners from the guys that we're just talking about right now? Yeah, they certainly are. And John and Scotty Scheffler and Justin Thomas, Scheffler specifically has this ability to make par from anywhere. And Justin Thomas is so good that he can get in trouble off the tee, Rick, knock it back and play to that like 120 yard range. And he's consistently one of the best players on tour in that respect. And Scotty, you almost always are counting uh, that the par is going to come from somewhere at a winning score that's historically probably going to be between four and eight under. Uh, it gives everyone sort of a chance to to um, keep their composure and stay in the fight. It, it really does. And, and the next tier is exciting as well because they just jam everybody into the 20s. It's Cam Smith at 20 to 1. It's Xander Shoffley sitting alone at 22. Then you get Colin Morikawa, Jordan Spieth, Matthew Fitzpatrick, Patrick Cantlay, Will Zalatoris, all at 25 to 1. And we round it out with a 28 to 1 on Victor Hovland, Jeff. And again, I mean, we are doing this now, Rick. Many people do expect with the strength of field, a bit of a market re reset. You love using this odds checker grid because, hey, I'm using the odds checker grid for majors almost year round, like 12 months a year. I'm keeping an eye on these major numbers. So when it gets time, I almost have these comparisons to make competition in the bet making space right now. We're hoping for a boost across the board. Uh, you know, if they're going to give you extended placings, you could see why Xander Shoffley stays at 22 to one. He does not finish worse than like eighth place in a U.S. Open. 
Uh, we always joke, but if you think the Morikawa Spieth putting wheel turns, then then it could be their time. Uh, Fitzpatrick won that USAM here. Cantley, I, I don't know, people discounting him because now he's not good at majors. That's the wild card here. Uh, the bet that I do have in this range, full disclosure, I have a Will Zalatoris 34 to 1, Rick. I know it's a little farther from that current number, but I think we'll get there with Will again next week. And I'll be like hyper beaconed on if any Will Zalatoris boosts uh, get thrown around the internet. Because when I consider what the winning score is going to be, I don't need every birdie putt. I just need Willie to be long and straight. And he's as good at that as the guys that are. I'm, I might have to pay 12 to 1 for. Got to get over that hump that he hadn't won yet, but didn't really seem to matter until the very end when him and Mito were battling JT just a month ago. Yeah, God, so many good golfers in this range. The one that stands out to me, probably Jordan Spieth. I'll, I'll probably click that name. It's just the game's coming together. He's marrying the better driving with the, you know, we've seen glimpses of the putter coming back and, and the country club is going to ask for absolute elite creativity around these greens. And that's what Jordan Spieth has the thirties, Jeff. This is where we start to get interesting. Um, Dustin Johnson, Sam Burns, Brooks Kepka, Shane Lowry. I, how do we begin to assess someone like Dustin Johnson, who hasn't played great on the PGA Tour? You know, he finishes eighth in London at a live golf event. I, like, is that a good finish for him? Is that a bad finish for him? Some of these guys are going to be really hard to handicap entering one of the biggest events of the year. Yeah, a guy like Dustin, who's flirting with 40 to 1, Rick's honestly got me in a pickle because he truly is the prototype U.S. Open golfer that everyone that's young and amazing that has almost followed from him has copied, or I don't want to say copied, but you know has sort of burst on the scene with his prototype. Just an ability to putt and chip and sort of maybe some maturity at a much younger age that it's so marvelous to see. But U.S. Opens over the last half decade plus have been built upon the Justin, uh, the Justin, the Dustin Johnson skill set. So anything that flirts with 40 gets my respect. Now, there's people that are going to debate the crowd. I'm not really sure. We live in such like an ecosystem bubble on Twitter. Like, will people be heckling these guys? Poulter and Sergio get a hard time in, on Northeast majors to begin with. So them getting the, the Bronx cheer wouldn't shock me. I guess Phil will be the ultimate litmus test as to how um, the crowd feels out in Brookline this week. I'm not discounting Dustin, but I'm not running to the mirror to bet him or any of them. If I did have to pick in those 30s, it would be the breakthrough for Sam Burns at a major championship. I don't care if it is a small event, big event. The guy just exudes natural born winner but i might even go a little farther down the board to chase that first time cherry rick yeah i actually um i'm glad you mentioned that because as we get into the 40s and 50s on the grid i i have two futures uh already i'm gonna enter the week with with a ticket on tony finau at 50 to 1 and daniel berger at 75 to 1 finau currently 41 daniel berger currently 50. So getting a little bit of value there, but this is this is where we start to get into the really good PGA Tour players that when everyone gets to a to one event, their odds are this long. And you're, you're asking a lot of them to break through for the first time. You're asking a lot of them to, you know, cover up uh, one one bad aspect of their game for a week. It, it, it's it's a very appealing option for a lot of people down here. Uh, certainly. And as if you've been following me for a while, these, these are the types of players that I find myself beholden to trying to predict that first time major, um, call that comes North of 30 to one in that 30 to 60 to one pocket, uh, I think has also been very kind in all the majors across the board. And I love your two leans. They're two personal favorites of mine that I find myself overexposed to, uh, time and time again. Um, but but following that lead, Rick, there are a few other guys. Max Homa getting some steam now, 55 to 1 on the grid. I'm telling you, there were like 70s, there were 80s, there were 100s not too long ago that I think a lot of us, self-included, feel silly sleeping on. Uh, the futures that I have made back here, Sung JM. Sung okay. JM got a bet boost. I already had him at 66. And then 365 bet boosted him to 80. 
Uh, that is a move that I have made. His two starts since being held out of the PGA Championship for uh, travel restrictions surrounding COVID uh, almost seemed perfect for a guy to catch this number at this moment in time. Uh, I believe the setup and the winning score were perfect for a potential Sung J M party. And you know, I, I, there's so many guys that I uh, can get sucked into in this back end of the range, Rick. Rick, yeah, Tommy Fleetwood, just as an example, people can giggle. Giggle away, boys. He's like a poor man Xander Shoffley when it comes to U.S. Opens. You're going to get extended placings on a U.S. Open uh, the way his driving has come together, he does just enough around the greens to keep himself for a big moment and things like this. So he's a guy, as well as the two you mentioned, Berger and Finau, and I can never not mention long and straight Das Wonder Kid, Joachim Neiman. Uh, so I'm ready for the breakthrough in Boston next week, certainly, Rick. Yeah, so the, the portion of the board that we've just discussed, this kind of 40 to 60 and then maybe pop a guy at the top. That that's likely where my card will will finish the week. But if we wanted to go further, we're getting into some larger asks, Jeff, but we are getting into the triple digits. Guys that have been playing well on tour, Aaron Wise, Harold Varner the 3rd, but how do some of these guys down in this range translate translate to legitimate US Open winning ability? That's a great question. You would look at, you know, what could be required at a week like this. And a guy like Corey Connors could come to mind also, whose number is getting back there. But, you know, the Northeast angle and how that, you know, always pops Keegan Bradley at triple digits, maybe with the extended placings. That's something you do not want to ignore. Former U.S. Open champion, the only guy that I don't believe was in the Top 20 in driving in these last like six winners, Gary Woodland coming in at 120 to one wreck. And I can't finish this segment without sort of, oh, I hear about the total driving statistics that have dominated US Open play. And I can't imagine a scenario where I am not losing money on Luke List. Right now I'm seeing 150 to one. Maybe it gets even higher, but you know, in 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 uh, DFS markets, placing markets, he can miss putts where I still like won't hate him. Uh, it's that type of player that I am going to be enamored with uh, this week, I believe. Gary Woodland won his U.S. Open on small Poana greens at Pebble Beach this week. Small Poana greens at Brookline. Maybe there is a little bit of a connection. Second smallest greens in major championship history. Jeff Feinberg, I'm a uh, I, I'm stoked. I, I know. I, again, we said we have not seen how the final round of the of the Canadian Open plays out yet. I will be glued to the television for at least the next eight consecutive days. Actually, I'll be at Brookline, but I'll be glued to golf for the next eight consecutive days, consuming nothing else in my life, and I cannot wait for it. It's gonna be a, a scene. It's it's probably gonna be bigger than golf, and maybe I'm speaking in hyperbole at the moment, but you just know like more than the sports media are coming um, for these golfers and for Brookline uh, this week. So it's going to be, yeah, it's lack of a better world, a word wild. I'm going to put you on the spot though, Rick, because we've just spoken about so much of the top heavy guys that do win the, at least this year and U S opens historically. If you had to make a move like a guy under 20 to one, who would be your pick du jour of the moment? I okay, so I think it's I think it's John Rom, um, and and the case the case for that is uh, you know obviously Rom has been an elite player for a long time and only quote only the Mexico Open win since uh, since he won this event last year. And remember when he changed clubs and started the year and he lost everything around the green. He lost the putter. Um, that is back. And he just lost strokes off the tee at the Memorial for the first time in like 40 events. Like he just snapped like the longest streak on tour, losing strokes, and he still finished T10. Like it is, and that was like the fifth hardest or best field of the of the year. So now you combine the fact that he's he's fixed the only problem that he's had. He's unlikely to drive the ball like that again. Um, you talk about the prototypical U.S. Open winner. John Rahm is is brewing big time for me. 
if you sort of follow my videos over the year and my Twitter feed, you know I probably fully agree with Rick for next week if I'm forced to make uh, that decision. But looks like guys are going to be coming in on a steamer for him, yes. uh, his peers, certainly. Can't wait. I've said it enough. Everyone's excited. Well, let's get it started. Jeff Feinberg, available on Twitter at G5Berg17. You can find me at Rick Run Good. This has been your odds checker betting preview for the U.S. Open. Good luck.